Hey, yo, here from the Neighborhood Quarter Guy here, and uh, you'll have to forgive me if I sound a little agitated today. I'm still a little salty of what I happened regarding the Splatoon test fire earlier today. The, well, the main purpose of this test fire was the stress test of the servers, and with so many people trying to get on during the one period it was going to be on this weekend, Nintendo severely underestimated their need for server load. As a result, lots of people could not get on including myself. Thankfully, Nintendo realized they screwed up and extended the test fire for another hour. Still, Nintendo... You need to think these things through ahead of time so that players can actually enjoy stuff like this. Speaking of Nintendo screwing things up, I've got a bad feeling about the Nintendo World Championship revival. You see, Nintendo is advertising the Nintendo World Championships as a big event in this year's E3, but I see a few issues with it. First of all, there's the fact that it's just going to be in a, happening in America. You can't exactly call it a world championship if it's just going to be in one country. Second issue, qualifiers. There are only eight locations that the qualifiers are going to be held at, so that is going to be a big problem, because there are going to be a lot of talented gamers out there who won't be able to compete in this thing because they're nowhere near one of the qualifying places. Third, the games. According to reports, it's going to be the World Championship mode that was introduced in NES Remix 2. Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 3, and Dr. Mario. How many gamers in this day and age are familiar with those games? I know people like me are familiar with that, and I know a bunch of people out there are familiar with that, but... The more recent Nintendo gamers... <clears throat> they probably have no clue how to play those games. Well, they might not anyway. Which is a problem. They could have at least included... more modern games in the lineup, from other generations of consoles. Like games on the Super Nintendo, like Tetris Attack, and 64 games like Mario Kart 64. GameCube games, like Super Smash Bros. Melee. You see where I'm getting at here? So restricted to three NES titles is not gonna attract a lot of attention. It's probably not gonna attract a lot of attention. So yeah, as cool as the World Championships 2015 sounds, I have my doubts and worries about it. Anyways, I've already got my June and uh, July countdown set up. Now, for June, like I've said, it's going to be Top 10 Boss Rage episodes for you fans of Maximilian out there. July is going to be Top 10 Games I've Played on Steam. Not necessarily, not necessarily PC exclusive, but Games I've Played on Steam. Just so that people know that I'm not exclusive to consoles. I have a little writer's blog at the moment for Top 10 Boss Rage episodes. I'm going to have to watch those episodes again just to of my talking points, but once I do, I'll get that out. Get work on that. Anyways, I'm going to try introducing something new this week. I'm going to call it the Your 25 Cent Worth the Your 25 Cent Worth Question of the Week. This week's question, the first one is going to be What are your hopes for E3 this year? I'm going to ask you to put your responses in the comments, and I'll take my my favorite comments and post them in next week's episode. Anyways, fourth wall mailbag time! So remember, if you want to send me a question for fourth wall mailbag, go to my channel, click the about tab, click send message, and send me your message that way. I'll read my favorites during the next week's episode. First, up, first question comes from BZ Soul, who asks, Would you want there to be a Pokemon Snap remake or a new generation to be announced next year? Pokemon Snap, I would like to see that. Despite being, you know, how old I am, I always have a soft spot for, nos for nostalgic franchises. And I really enjoyed Pokemon Snap on the N64. And I really think it's the kind of game that would work on Wii U, given the nature of the gamepad. You can also work with the Pro, Pro Controller, so players have a choice. As for a new generation, I don't think we need one just yet. If anything, we're probably going to get Pokemon Z before a new generation comes out. And to be honest, I really don't think a new generation is necessary until the next 
until the next hardware comes out. That being said, who knows where the who knows where Pokemon would go from here? Next question comes from Dusk the Epic Hedgehog, who asks, "What are your thoughts about this whole mobile game thing? I think it is stupid." Okay, I'm going to try to be as mature about this as possible. A lot of people are saying out there that mobile is destined to pretty much become the primary source of gaming within the next generation. To be honest, I am a traditional gamer, and I think that if mobile, be mobile completely displaces console and PC gaming too soon, I fear for the future of traditional gaming. Let me put it to you in an analogy. Comparing what a... Comparing most of what I've seen of mobile gaming to traditional gaming, it's kind of like comparing a bag of chips to a home-cooked meal. Most of mobile games are, are, from what I've seen, short bursts of gameplay that are pretty much good for like killing 5-10 minutes in time, maybe 15 or maybe a half hour. Traditional games are the kind you invest your time in. And I know a lot of people have mobile devices, but not all of them, not everyone who has a mobile device uses it for gaming. And it's not that the technology doesn't exist for mobile games to reach the quality you'd expect from a console or PC game. I mean, we've got the Unity engine, and a mobile version of the Unreal engine is under development. And we've got peripherals that provide joystick experiences on mobile devices. So the technology exists. But to replicate the kind of experience you get from a console or PC game takes a lot more effort. And so far, I really have yet to see that kind of effort for the most part for most mobile games. So, if mobile games completely displace console and PC games, I hope that traditional gaming is able to catch up on mobile devices before that ever happens. That's my take. But there is a certain business practices that bugs me about mobile gaming, but that's a story for another day. Next question comes from the Roman Vulcan who asks, Now that Chrono Phantasma's out, do you think you could remake Top 10 Astral Heats? Oh boy, that one. Yes, I want to remake that one. For three reasons. One, opinions have shifted since I made that list, and with Chrono Phantasma having more characters and more Astral Heats as a, as a consequence, I'm going to have to probably make that list again, maybe even extend it to a top 15. Second, the, the original was taken, the original I took down because it drew a third-party content claim, and uh, especially now that I'm a partner with PR on Digital, I want to avoid third-party content claims as much as possible. Third, and the most important one of all, to be honest, the original list was rather lackluster, and definitely not one of my best works. I mean, I was kind of stiff, my voice was kind of bland, and, uh, well, the use of still images to represent the characters was just not a good idea. So yeah, maybe after the top 10 games I played on Steam, I'll probably remake Astral Heats. Next question comes from Christopher Cox, who asks, Why didn't you put Zero on your top 10 most anticipated SSB4 characters? First of all, Chris, the list was top 10 most wanted Super Smash Bros. 4 DLC characters. And the reason I left Zero out was because, as outlandish as some of my choices were, I had to be realistic about some things. If there is a third, if there is a second third-party character from a third-party company, I am pretty sure that it's going to be from a different franchise. And after all, we already have Mega Man. And to be honest, so to be honest, I don't think they would add another Mega Man character as DLC. But who knows? I've been wrong before. In fact, lots of times I've been wrong. So, who knows? Final question comes from Nightwolf King, who asks. What do you expect to be in Kingdom Hearts 3? I at least expect to be able to dig Xanort a grave. <laughs>